I am the resurrection and the life. Says the Lord. And he that believeth in me shall never die.
of sorrow that heaven cannot heal. day of rejoicing it will be. Come on, let's give the Lord's name praise. Amen. Amen. We come to celebrate the life of Sister Patricia Ann Black, one who we have loved and we have admired and we, have, we are thankful for her contribution here on this side. And we celebrate her homegoing and we praise God for her life. She was such an extraordinary woman extraordinary gift in music and worship. And today she has outlined her funeral worship experience for us to share and to praise God. And it's listed in your worship guide. And we were asked that you would share in worship, not only in the, in the, in the music and in the arts, that she has prepared for us today. And we will hear a hymn in song, It is well, it is well with my soul and the Lord's Prayer. And the scripture by Reverend Rocker, and then a selection by given to us by the H. Avon Green Memorial Chorale. We will follow the program as outlined, and we will Lift up God because it is well with our soul.
Amen. This morning's scripture comes from Psalm 27. And it reads as such. Triumphant song of confidence of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though any ar an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. O God of my salvation, if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord to the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We will begin our reflections as outlined on our worship in our worship guide. And these verses will come. And I'm asked that you would please be seated on the front row at this time as a director, Brother Sims, as a friend, Brother Stratton, and as a grandmother, Dr. Kimberly Glenn. Amen. Godmother, I'm sorry, excuse me. God. Elvin Green Memorial Tribute. May God be always with us. I am Earl Sims, as printed on the program, and I have been asked to give remarks from the choir. Final remarks, meaning the last thing about our gracious, most impressive directress and leader emeritus. Next to God, there is no one else that can fill her shoes. So I'll tell you what our choir feels or what I feel about Miss Black. She was a person who gave all of her time, all of her efforts to first God and secondly, to her bumpkins. You may not know who bumpkins are, but we are the people that she led, prayed for, and directed. Ms. Patricia Ann Black was educated in Duval County completely. I asked around, because I didn't know her. I asked around and I found out that she graduated from high school in 1969. She attended Edward Waters College and became one of the featured soloists and vocal performers there under Dr. H. Alvin Green. We love Miss Black. And she loved us back. There was never a time that she did not come to the rescue of those who were in the choir. By rescue, in prayer, in song, in service, and in decorum. Miss Black has never shown to us an angry moment, which is a tribute to her life. The life that she led was one of peace, one of God, one of always being there for her bumpkins and more especially, her God. I say that Miss Black was no more than a tree that stands or sits by the river. She shall not be moved. But God, in his time, in his will, in this day that all of us will face, said to her, come home, 
my faithful servant. And she stepped out on Tuesday morning at 4 a.m. And she traveled to the angelic choir where I pray and I believe that she will not only utilize her skills there, but also assist God in helping us to reach that same plateau. Miss Black, we love you. With all of our hearts, with all of our hearts, as Mar Angelou said, when a great tree falls, when a great tree falls, rocks on distant hills shatter. My heart shatters for the love of a person who is shared with me. And I'll say one other thing before I conclude. She was a person that not only praised God, loved her bumpkins, but she enjoyed, and she probably should have been a veterinarian <laughs> because she loved her animals. All right? The first one was a duck. The next one was a baboon. Okay? Miss Black demonstrated that she loved cats, which was one of her father's favorite, favorite animals. I say that God has called her from labor to refreshment, and she is now enjoying her seat in heaven before the angelic choir. Praise be to God, glory to all. Thank you. The final concert, celebrating the life legacy of Directress Patricia Ann Black. I'm grateful that we shared the same first name. And that's about all that I can say that I had in the likeness of Sister Patricia Ann Black. And as I stand today, I stand to express my feelings about Sister Pat and also a word from Sister Venus Ross, who counted it an absolute honor to be her class leader. Sister Ross isn't able to be with us physically this morning, but I know in heart and in viewing virtually that she is with us. And Sister Venus asked me to just say a word about Sister Pat's ability to help those who didn't have necessarily the talent to sing, but to bring out the best in all of us. And Sister Venus said, Sister Pat accepted the challenge to help her prepare to sing a song. And she said that was an absolute tribute. She also spoke about Sister Pat's ability as an absolute extraordinary chef. And those of us who know Patricia Black know that she cooked and not only just cooked food, but her heart was in her cooking. As a member of St. Stephen, she was a very, very stately woman. And she was more than just a member. It's not enough for us to just be a member of a church. But God asked for our service and asked for our heart. And he asked for our commitment. And that's what Sister Patricia Black gave to St. Stephen. She walked in 
grace, and even as an usher on the door, she did it with dignity, she did it with honor, and she did it with humility. I met Sister Black when she would bring the choir to do concerts at St. Stephen. And I don't remember the lady's name that was in the wheelchair, but she would always introduce uh, Sister Black, and she would call her Patricia Ann Block. And, and I wondered, I said, well, and then I found out and I realized that it, it was really because she wanted to elevate and highlight that name, amen. Sister Pat has left and continued and it always will be a legacy for those who truly knew her because to know Patricia Black was to love her. And I'm just so thankful that I had the opportunity to be loved by her and to love her. I would go so many times to commune her and she would often tell me, you won't leave here until you sing for me. And when Sister Black gave a command, you did that, amen? And you were glad to do it, amen? So I'm grateful even in those last days to have been able to share with her and with one of the greatest friends in the whole wide world, Sister Gloria Simon. And even when she would not call on anyone else, she would call a little bit. It, it was all about a little bit. And little bit has become the biggest little bit I'll ever know. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When we were in the course at Matthew William Gilbert High School, Pastor's laughing because I guess that's been a minute, right? <laughs> Amen. But the directors of our course was Sister Starling and Sister Ruth Gregg. And whenever we would go for the competition in concert for the choirs, for the chorus, we would strive for what we thought was excellence. But Ms. Gregg always told us excellent wasn't good enough. You always wanted to get superlative. Sister Patricia on block, you have earned superlative. And we give God the glory, we give God the honor, and we give God the praise. Amen. Thank you. In the midst of trouble, in the midst of despair, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And this morning, I will speak well of the God of my salvation, who is ultimately in control who is too wise to make a mistake, and he is a, the lifter of my head. I met Ms. Black approximately 50 years ago through Mr. Kenneth Falk. Now, what I haven't been able to understand, 50 years ago, and I'm only 27, <laughs> it don't add up. But a bond was developed among the three of us. It was Pat, Kenneth, and Albert. We became the best of friends, and when you saw one, most times you saw all three of us. The journey began as we continued our life as young adults. Some of the things that I admired about, appreciated about her is her ability to accept me for who I was while I was becoming. I appreciate her for being able to 
disagree, and at the end of the day, we were still able to embrace one another. I appreciate, appreciate her for her ability to support me in my endeavors as well as I supported her. She was loyal, even though she would call me all kinds of names. Now, one of them was Baboon. I didn't know she had an animal called Baboon. I'll deal with her later. But she will not allow anybody to sp speak ill of me or Kenneth in front of her. She was loyal enough. She was loyal even though she, was, she would tell us she's going to find a new friend at the end of the year. As a man, as a best friend, as a person who was submitted under her authority as a gifted music teacher and directress, I was and still is amazed how she was able to bring men, women, and children from various walks of life to produce a sound and not only a sound, a look, as we was able to minister in song. There's a poem titled Tree Memorial Poem, the author is unknown. It says, there's a very special garden where the trees of memory grow, nurtured by the kindness and concern that good friends show. The roots are cherished memories of good times in the past, and we had some good times, but that's not for y'all to know. <laughs> uh, the branches tender promises that souls endure and last. It's a place of peace and beauty where bright new hopes can start. It's memory's lovely garden that soothes the hurting heart. Thank you for being a friend. To God be the glory. Good morning. To you, she may have been Pat or Miss Pat. To some, she was Miss Black. To some, she was Madam Directress. But to me, for the past 49 years, she was just plain old mom. It's funny how growing up I thought she was the meanest person in the world. And as I stand here today to reflect, I think she's the sweetest thing I've ever known. I learned early a couple of things that I could tell you about firsthand as her godchild. Number one, she did not play with children. And I know all of the kids that grew up in here today under her can tell you she didn't play with children. A child needed to stay in a child's place, and she was the one to tell you what place that was. Number two, she was a strong disciplinarian. And I believe it's God's son. Nate can attest to it, too. Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am was a must. And when she told you, I mean, asked you to do something, you simply did it. You didn't question it. You didn't second guess it. And you smiled and acted like you was happy about what she had asked you to do. Those that knew my godmama either liked her or they didn't. But in the same vein, she either liked you or, you, or she didn't. The difference between her and you was that her decision was known and she acted accordingly. One thing for certain, two things for sure. If she couldn't help you, she doggone sure wasn't gonna hurt you. Her motives and her heart was as pure as gold. My godmama loved the Lord, and she had a great understanding of his word and of the teachings, even though she spoke from the gospel according to Pat Black. Whatever she said to you, now you could take that to the bank. She didn't write blank checks. Her yes was yes. And when she said no, you could cancel Christmas on the note. 
To know her was truly to love her, and I definitely loved her. As a child, among the many things she did for me, she taught me and she gave me so much advice, most of it unsolicited, but advice nonetheless. And when I took her advice, things was a lot easier. As I slept in her room last night for the last time, I began to remember as a kid how she often gave me a safe place to lay my head. Many times it was just her bosom as she wiped the tears from my face. And indeed, she was more than just Pat. She was more than just Miss Black. She was more than just a directress. She was one of a kind. She would often say to me, your mama gave birth to you, but you my child. And indeed, I was her fit baby because nobody's name was their name. How many of you in here today can say she gave you a name? I was her thick baby, Kimberly, and everybody knew it. I remember when I went to high school, I told her I no longer wanted to use my first name anymore, that I should be referred to as K. Michelle Glenn. And I thought this would be real easy for her. She don't call anybody by their name anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I thought. Well, she let me know real quick in no uncertain terms that people could call me whatever I wanted them to call me. But my mama had named me Kimberly, and she would continue to call me Kimberly, and I would answer like I always had. And of course, I did just that. That was hilarious. As her health began to fail, I'm thankful that the circle of life allowed the roles to reverse. And I had a chance to feed her and to even have her over to my house for some sleepovers. Not without a fight, but we had sleepovers nonetheless. And boy, we had a time. Most people say to me, you're talented, you can sing, and you speak well. Today, I realize that everything I do well, she taught me how to do. She spoke greatness over me even as a child growing up. I used to like to talk a lot. And she would say, not today, baby, not today. But one day, somebody's going to pay you to talk, but it ain't today. Go sit down somewhere. I'm grateful that she lived long enough to see it happen. A year ago, she attended the first live recording of my syndicated talk show, The Green Room. And she lived long enough to see me get paid to travel around the world and talk. As an adult, when I planned the life of myself and it fell apart, probably because I didn't take some of her unsolicited advice, we started having nightly midnight conversations. Oh, we would talk sometimes to three or four in the morning or until I woke up to get ready to go to work because she was retired, she could talk all night. We talked about what she wanted today to look like. She talked about it a few times, any of you all know her. She kept saying it till she figured I got what she was talking about and I was understanding of what she was requesting. She told me, I want you to stand flat-footed, bold, and tell the story loud and clear without tears and with a smile. She asked that I set the stage. She told me, thick baby, I need you to go there. You know how she would say, I need you to go there. And I do mean go there. So in closing, I'm honoring her with the first recitation she taught me. Go Down Death, James Weldon Johnson, adapted by me to tell the plat black version. Go with me. Weep not. Weep not. She is not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Heartbroken brother, weep no more. Grief-stricken friends and family, weep no more. She's only just gone home. <laughs> On Tuesday, August 2nd, God was looking down from his great high heaven looking down on all of his children, and his eye fell on my godmama <laughs> as she was tossing on her bed of pain. And God's big heart was touched with pity, with the everlasting pity. 
And he sat back on his great big throne. And he commanded that tall, bright angel standing on the right hand side, you call me death. Call death. And that angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder, call death, call death. And the sounds echoed down the streets of heaven to reach way back to the shadowy places where death waited with his pale white horses. And death heard the summons. Yes, he did. He leaped on his fastest horse, pale as a sheet in the moonlight. Out and down the streets of heaven, death rode. And the hooves of his horse struck fire from the gold, but they didn't make any sound. And there, death rode to the great white throne, and he waited for God's command. And God said, go down, death, go down. Go down, death, and get me our next choir director in Jacksonville, Florida. Go down in Crystal Springs. Go down and get Pat Black and bring her to me. Death didn't say a word but he loosened the reins of his pale horse and he clamped the spurs to his bloodless side and out and down death road. Through heaven's pearly gates on death road, past the sun, the moon, the stars on death road. Leaving lightning flashing behind him. Straight on down death came. Now at 4.24 a.m., while Miss Little Bit was standing on one side of the bed, and as I stand on the, on the other, and as we held her hand, we watched her slip away. Only one tear fell from her face. She saw death coming to her like a falling star, but that didn't frighten my godmama. Oh, no, that didn't frighten my godma. Death looked like a welcome friend. And death took her up in his icy arms. And he began to ride again. Out past the morning star, the evening star, the noon star, death rode again. On to the great white throne. And he laid my godmama, the eldest child of Arthur and Carrie Black the sister of Malcolm, Deborah, and Derek, the best friend of Gloria, Kenneth, and Albert, he laid her on the loving breast of Jesus. And God took his own hand, and he wiped that one tear from her face. And he smoothed the furrow. And he kept saying, Pat, take your rest. Take your rest. And the angel sang a little song, and Jesus continued to just rock her in his arms. Weep not, weep not. She is not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Give God name some praise. Amen. Thank you very much. And as we reflect on the life of Sister Blight by reading the obituary, we will hear another rendition from Motherless Child. Patricia Ann Black was born April 30th, 1951, to the late Arthur and Carrie Black in Jacksonville, Florida. She confessed to Christ and was baptized at an early age under the leadership of late Reverend King David Britt at Second Missionary Baptist Church. She sang in the children's choir, the Bell Waters Choir, and was a member of the Usher Board. As an adult, she joined Central Metropolitan CME Church, where she served as the choir directress for many years. 
Patricia was educated in the Duval County Public School System and graduated in 1969 from William Marion Raines High School. After high school, she was awarded a music scholarship and attended and graduated from Edward Waters College. It was there that she met her mentor, the late H. Alvin Green, who changed the course of her destiny. It was Professor, as she affectionately called him, that stirred up the gifts of music and dramatic recitation that would later be the inspiration to for several choirs she formed, Cultural Express Unlimited, the Ebony Angels, the J.W. Honeysucker Community Choir, H. Alvin Green Memorial Chorale, and the Heavenly Angels, to name a few. Pat was employed for 34 years by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida, retiring in 2008. She was the life of the party. Pat enjoyed cooking, socializing, throwing parties, playing bid whist, going to the casino and working with her choirs. She loved good music and good food. Pat had a heart of gold. Her bark was truly louder than her bite. In later years, she rededicated her life to Christ and united with the St. Stephen AME Church under the leadership of then Pastor Michael Mitchell. She was a member of the United Choir and the Usher Board Number 3. As an alumnus, Pat was very involved with Edward Waters College. She raised thousands of dollars for students and the choral program. Pat was preceded in death by her parents, Arthur and Carrie Black, her brothers, Arthur Black Jr., Malcolm Black Sr., her sister, Deborah Black King, and her fur baby, Jasmine Black. Pat made her transition into eternity on August 2nd, 2023. Left to cherish memories of a lifetime is her best friend. Gloria Simon brother, Derek Black, Tina, her godchildren, Nathaniel Nelson, Kimberly, Michelle, Glenn, Wayne Stansberry, and Zaina Pate, close friends Albert Stratton and Kenneth Falk, her bumpkins, the members H. Alvin Green Memorial Chorale, her caregivers, Charlotte Nelson, Andy Simon, Danielle and Daryl Hardy, Josephine Davis, her fur babies, Pierre and Rocket, brother-in-law, Charles King, and a host of nieces and nephews, grandnieces and grandnephews, cousins, and many, many sorrowing friends.
know you love me, but I love you more. St. Stephen, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 913 West 5th Street, Jacksonville, Florida, 32209. Dr. David W. Green, Sr., Pastor. August 12, 2023, Resolution in Memory of Sister Patricia Ann Black. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry? for a soul set free. Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head hung low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take and each must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, Go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Whereas God in his divine wisdom has lowered the final curtain and called from the labors of this life to sweet rest and fellowship of the angelic choir in heaven, our dear member and friend, Sister Patricia Black, even as we mourn Sister Black's transition to her heavenly home, we are resigned to the will of our all-wise and all-loving God. And whereas Sister Black joined the St. Stephen African Methodist Episcopal Church in Christian fellowship over 20 years ago, under the spiritual guidance of our former pastor, the Right Reverend Michael L. Mitchell, always fashionably dressed and donning an eye-catching hat, Sister Black enjoyed being in worship services and sitting with her devoted friend, Brother Kenneth Falk. And whereas St. Stephen has lost a faithful member of the United Choir and Usher Board No. 3, and the community has lost a gifted, talented soloist and dedicated choral directress, Sister Black touched the hearts of many as she freely gave of her time and talents to perpetuate the music of her professor and mentor, H. Alvin Green. From 1987 until her health began to fail, Sister Black was the directress of the H. Alvin Green Memorial Alumni Choir as they sang to keep alive Professor Green's music and his influence on their lives. And whereas Sister Black's life was evident of the fact that she believed in God's word, and followed his guidance. She used her gifts to fulfill Psalms 103, 104, 33, which declares, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. And whereas we are grateful to God for the privilege of knowing Sister Black and for the time we were able to share with her, we are inspired by her disciplined approach to a task, her commitment to excellence, her joyful spirit, her loving demeanor, and her forthrightness. While we will miss Sister Black, we have no doubt that she has earned her crown of righteousness and is resting safely in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, be it resolved that the officers and members of the St. Stephen African Methodist Episcopal Church family pause this day, August 12, 2023, to pay tribute to the beautiful life and legacy of our dear member, Sister Patricia Ann Black. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to her family and especially our members, her caring and loving, loyal friend, Sister Gloria Simon, her caregiver, Charlotte Nelson, her godson, Nate Wilson, and her devoted friend, Kenneth Falk. We pray that the words expressed in this resolution 
will bring some consolation and that God will supply you with all that you need as you journey through the season of bereavement. We encourage you to find comfort in knowing that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in the spirit. We hold you close within our hearts and there you shall remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. So rest in peace, dear loved one, and thanks for all you've done. We pray that God has given you the crown you've truly won. Sorrowfully submitted the offices and members of St. Stephen African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Dr. David W. Green, Sr., Pastor. It is obvious from all the comments that have been made today that the works of Sister Black speak for her. A beloved family member, friend, confidant has departed this life, leaving all of us to mourn her transition. As Christians, we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Just as Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus, we feel sorrow and sadness at the loss of a loved one. However, we do not walk alone through sorrow because our loving Heavenly Father dispatches earthly angels to help us along the way. The family and friends of Sister Patricia M. Black have asked that I express their sincere thanks and appreciation for lifting them up in prayer, for lending a helping hand, for taking the time to listen, for sharing your love, and provided needed comfort and care. All that you have done to support the family has made this journey through grief so much easier to bear. At an appropriate time in the future, you will receive a, per, a more personal message of gratitude and thanks for your many acts of kindness. Until then, please continue to keep the family in your thoughts and prayers. With sincere thanks and appreciation, the family of the late Sister Patricia Ann Black.
Amen. 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 Come on, choir, one more last time for Sister Pat. Come on, he's more than he's more than enough. Anybody know that he's more than enough? Come on, come on, let's give God some praise in here today. He's more than enough. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, he's more. Yeah, yeah, he's more. Put those blessed hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Gracious and holy God, we come before you now and we pause. And we celebrate the life of your servant. We pray your spirit will remain with us. And that you would bless us and that you would comfort us through the word of God. We decrease that you might increase. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. To this family who comes to say good night to their loved one, especially lift up Sister Gloria Simon, and, and we lift up Brother Derek Plank and all of her goddaughters and family. We lift you up in prayer all of the clergy who have assembled. We thank you for your prayers and we thank you for your support. We thank especially Pastor Wilson and the church family of the Second Missionary Baptist Church. Give up, Pastor. Amen. Well, he was here. Amen. We honor him today. Let the church say amen. Amen. And to all of the officers and members of the St. Stephen EME Church, we greet you and we thank you for your support for this family. And to all that have assembled, former choir members, and we thank you and we praise God for you, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Briefly, we want to call your attention to Psalm 35, verse 5. Psalm 30, verse 5. And it reads, For his anger endured but a moment, and in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, 
but joy cometh in the morning. I want to preach for the time that is mine, making it through the dark places of life. Nothing in life can prepare us for death of a loved one, whether death results from a sudden accident or sustained illness. It always catches us off guard. Death is so deeply personal and stunning. Nothing can emotionally prepare us for its arrival. With every death, there is a loss, and with every loss, there will be grief. But grief doesn't come and go in an orderly, confined time frame. Just when we think uh, that the anguish is over, another wave sweeps in and we are forced to revisit the memories, the pain, and the fear. Sometimes we try to resist the demands of grieving and we long to avoid the fierce, the pilgrimage journey that we must all take. Culture tells us to move past this process quickly. Take a few days, weeks, perhaps, to grieve, but don't stay there too long. Grieving can make those around us uncomfortable. Friends sometimes don't know what to do with our pain. Loved ones struggle to find the, the right words to comfort our aching wounds. Yet grief, as painful a season as it is, is a necessary part of our healing. To run from grief is to run from the very thing that can heal the pain of our loss. Grieving can be the most difficult time for people, trying to balance the feeling of pain and loss while growing, going forward with your everyday life. But please, my brothers and sisters, trust God. And trust God word today to ease and comfort your pain and to help you look to the answer and path to overcome your grief. Here, trust the psalm this, this morning when he says to us today in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our grief, weeping endures for a night. But joy comes in the morning. You will see then that the statement of our text implies that death and our grieving and our loss is not a staying place. Uh, yes, we go through dark times in life. And the loss of a loved one puts us all in a dark place. But we must understand that it's not a staying place and it's not a permanent place because the summons here gives us encouragement by saying to us today that, that weeping endures but for a night. But if you can hold on, joy comes in the morning. You will see that that, that, that joy will come in the midst of our pain and in the midst of our struggle when we think about the person that we are saying goodnight to. And we know where she is going and we know where she has gone. When we think about uh, the life of Sister Pat Black, we understand today that yes, it's even though it's not easy finding joy, uh, we can consider this today that when we think about her life and think about her and think about what she meant to the kingdom, what she meant to God, we can find joy today. And we can find joy because we understand that death is a paradox. It's not the end, but it's only the beginning. It's the end and the beginning all at the same time. We come at a time where we say a good night to Sister Pat, 
but she says good morning to Jesus. After going through, after going through a, a difficult and trying time, and even going through some dark places in life, in life, the joy is today that she has received her reward. That she has received her reward. And she understands today clearly now. Even though she had to experience dark places in life. Weeping only indoors. But for a night. And joy comes in the morning. Yes, yes, she fought a good fight. Yes, she fought a good fight. I mean, she really fought a good fight. She fought a good fight, and she kept the faith. And she finished her course. Henceforth is laid up for her a crown of righteousness. And I know she loved beautiful hats, but that's not what but the crown that she had received the other morning. The crown that she received all the other morning was a crown of righteousness. And the Bible says that's only for those who, who believe. That's only for those who trust in the Lord. That's, who does, that's, that's for those who hold on in the heat of the day. That, that's for those who don't give in and don't give up. She fought a good fight, but she finished her course. And henceforth, it laid up for her a crown of righteousness. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. We can find joy this morning because we understand that death is a paradox. But secondly, we can find joy today because absent from the body is present with the Lord. Sister Pat is with the Lord. And because, and because she is with the Lord, she has a new life. I can hear her singing, new life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. She has a new life. And I can hear her saying to us this morning from the balconies of glory, don't worry about me because I'm in a better place. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a better place. Yeah, we can find joy today. We can find joy today because death is a paradise. Yes, we can find joy today because absent from the body, we know it's present with the Lord. But thirdly, we can find joy today because what's coming is better than what's being. What's coming for Sister Pat is better than what's being. What's coming for her is better than, uh, than, 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 than what she had to endure on this side. What, what's coming on the other side? All I'm trying to say is better than what she had on this side. The other night, she took wings and, and she flew to a better place. A better place. A servant of God, well done. Rest from your love and plug. The battle is fought. The victory is won. Enter into your master's joy. What's coming? What's, what, what, what's, what's coming for her, Pastor? What's coming for her, Pastor? What's coming for her is no more sickness and no more pain, no more grief and no more struggles, and no more troubles, no more troubles, no more trials, no more tribulation, no more pandemic. That's what's coming for her on the other side. Some glad morning when this life is over, we will fly away. We'll fly away to a better place. We'll fly away to a better place. And I can hear Sister Pat singing up in the angelic choir. I can hear her finding her place. I believe she found her place. She said, lead me to the angelic choir. And I can hear her singing from the balconies of heaven. What is she singing right now, Pastor? Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now am I now see. What's she singing, Pastor? Why shall I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why 
Should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? My comfort friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. So family, don't worry about me because I see because I'm happy. I see because I'm free. I see because his eye is on the sparrow and I know and I know he watches over me when peace I believe the last song she I believe when she got there she grabbed when peace like a river attended the, my way when sorrow like sea billows began to roar whatever my lot thou uh, has taught me to say it is well it is well it is well it's well with my soul Thank <laughs> you. 